Our choir has been working so hard lately, and I appreciate them. They, when Pastor and I talked about me coming up and working with the choir and, and doing the music, I told them, I said, you know, I said, there's some new stuff I'd like to do, and we have a wonderful pastor. Everything is biblical as long as we do it that way. Amen. He don't have a problem with Amen. it. And the choir and, and the youth and everybody, look, look at this choir. It's beautiful. <laughs> Amen. It's a choir. And so we want to bless y'all with a song. Because we're able to give back to God a portion of what He's blessed us with. 
you want to have it, God had to give it to you. Because he's given it to you, it's good to give him back a portion to keep his ministry going. Amen. Amen. And so thank God for that. Thank God for the opportunity. So that's what it is. It's an opportunity. Last night, we did go out there and Brother John gave me the honor of being able to pray over the, uh, the fireworks show and everything. And, and uh, it was an honor. And I thank you for that. You know, Anytime you lift up the Lord's name uh, before a group of people and everything, it's a great honor. It's a great opportunity. And we thank God for that. And so every day can be lived that way. That's what we're here for. We're here to glorify him until he calls me home, Miss Claudia, and then I'll glorify him in heaven. Amen. Amen. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep glorifying him down here and thank God for that opportunity. Now, as we are looking forward and as these things are happening uh, before us and everything, we uh, are setting up uh, our plans for our homecoming, which will be uh, the 1st of September. And uh, we're looking forward to that, getting, uh, getting that all established and going and everything. Of course, I know... You know, there's uh, the question about school and the question about this and the question about, you know what, we'll just take every day as it comes. Mm -hmm. Live it as God gives it to you. And if you get out of bed in the morning, get back in that same bed tonight, thank God for that day. Amen. Mm -hmm. And by the way, start off by thanking him because you got out of bed and thanking him because you got back in that bed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great blessing. It really is. I got in bed last night, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I thank you for it. I did. I thank you for it. I thank you for the opportunity Good. and everything. So that's what your fireworks do. Put you me in the in the morning. Show sure enough. Uh, I ch hush, Danny. I <laughs> squeeze, <laughs> June. You see, Miss Claudia, why I have to take and give him a hard time? Because he does stuff like that. He creates problems. <sighs> Where, where's Kendra? Hey, Kendra. Don't you bring me in this. <laughs> Hold on one second. Who said I did it? You said I do. You should have looked into that before you said I do. That's all I got to say. Anyhow, before I digress anymore, Brother Chris, if you would ask the blessing we offer this morning. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to get in your house this morning, Lord. We do thank you for the rain that you're giving us. Lord, we thank you that you know when to send it. We thank you that you know when to stop it. Yes, Lord. Thank you so much for all you do for us, Lord. We just thank you for this opportunity to give back with a portion of what you've given us, Father. And pray you just take it and apply it here in our local community and throughout the world, Lord, and, and just through our missionaries. And Father, we just pray uh, uh, for the message that's uh, said today. If there's anyone here that does not know you as a personal Savior, Father, we pray they would not leave that way today. Yes. Lord, we just thank you again for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs>
Bibles with you this morning. It is good to be in God's house. It's good to be able to open up the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Go with me <clears> to <throat> Galatians. Oh, Lord. I don't know that I've ever done that before. So write my notes out right there. I got chapter 6, you know, but I didn't write down Galatians. Amen. Does that mean I'm getting over and forgetful and things like that? Amen. Well, you see, says the old guy up front. Galatians in chapter number 6. You could have said awful nicely, Brother Alex, welcome to the club. Oh, welcome to the club. Oh, thank you. Galatians in chapter number 6. Now, I like the book of Galatians. I really do. I love the Bible. I love the Bible. What can I gonna say? But I like the book of Galatians because it deals with... Uh, a lot of the religious issues that unfortunately sometimes people try to shy away from or try to uh, manufacture or make or whatever anyways. But uh, I want to deal with today for your benefit. Today's message is entitled for your benefit. What that actually means is uh, God knew exactly what you would need and how, would, how you would need it in your life. As a matter of fact, in the days and times which we're living in, God didn't design us to go it alone. God didn't design us to be isolated or shut off. God designed us in such a form and fashion that he knew we would need each other and that we would need to depend upon one another. Amen. And so because of that, that's a very important factor. A very important factor because the more and more that we go into the times and the days ahead, we're going to need each other even that much the more. And we do. We really do. Matter of fact, uh, this is God's buddy system, if you will. And I like that. Because Miss Claudia, God always does things right. He gives it to us right. He says it right. And in that, I want you to see it this morning. Look with me in Galatians chapter 6. If you're with me this morning, say amen. amen. For the rest of you, come on, catch on in here. Amen. Galatians 6, verse number 1 says, Brethren, that's those of us who are believers. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault... Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us, let us, brethren, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, but we faint not. As we have, underline this, understand this, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That's why he started off with brethren. And that's why he brought back around to the brethren. Why? Because that's where we ought to turn our focus and our attention in the times in which we're living. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you speak to the hearts here today. I pray it will be with us throughout the message today as only you can in Christ's name. Amen. Go back with me to verse number one. I want you to see it today. He says, brethren. I'm glad today that I have brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. What that means is that that makes us family. That means that you and I, we belong to God. And because of that, we ought to care one for another. We ought to look out one for another. We ought to help one another. Amen. The reason why that's so important. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a family of uh, seven, if you will. And uh, I got five brothers, or four brothers, and myself and mom and dad. And in the process of that, it wasn't always easy growing up in that house. <laughs> Praise God. I thank God for it. Amen. Sometimes we fought. Sometimes we uh, messed with each other and uh, gave each other hard times. Amen. But you know what? Don't you mess with my brother. Amen. Don't you lay one hand on my brother. You know, here's the thing as I begin to ponder and begin to think about I was talking to Brother uh, Kenneth Scott last night as he was cleaning and and uh, one thing we were discussing was uh, things that ought not so be in the house of God. In all honesty, this ought to be the one place where you can come and find peace. 
This ought to be the one place where you can be comforted. This ought to be the one place where we're not che uh, uh, chewing each other up and speeding each other out. Amen? It ought to be the one place where we're not, uh, you know, critical and tearing one another down. No, it, it ought not be like that in the house of God. Amen? Amen. It ought to be a place where we love, we care for, we look after, and we help one another out. That's what it ought to be. And the reason that's so important is because we're all part of the same family. And by the way, how did you get a part of this family? The same way I did if you're a part of the family, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And in that, because it ain't something that you did or something that I did, but God did for us, amen. Just like when I was born into the Scott family, I didn't do anything but get born into it, amen. Sure enough, and I thank God for that. But here's the deal. I remember as I grew up in the Scott household, I knew all the ins and outs. I knew the bad stuff in the Scott household as well as I knew the good stuff. Amen. I got to see behind the curtains, if you will. I got to see what happened when the doors got closed. And in that, it caused us to grow together. It sure did. I remember Miss Kay as uh, I was developing and growing up and everything. I remember uh, some of the things as I watched my mom and my dad did that everybody else outside the world didn't get to see. Amen. And in that, I thank God for what I grew up in and how God got and directed me. But now as I have been in the house of God for all my life, if you will, as a matter of fact, the very first Sunday I was born, uh, when you know, the very first week when I got born, Brother Alex, the very first Sunday I was in church. I've been in church my entire life. I sure enough have. Now, that didn't make me saved just because I've been in church my entire life. I, like you, I had to come to Christ. I had to accept Him as my personal Savior. But in the process of it, Brother Buck, I thank God that I'm a part of the family of God. I really do. And being a part of the family of God, it means something to me. As in other words, when I hear of churches that still haven't opened their doors, that breaks my heart. That really does. When I hear people who are believers being persecuted, that breaks my heart. But you know what really bothers me the most or really affects me the most? Are the people right here. Amen. This house right here. The place where God has put me. And because of that, Miss Sherry, I thank God for where he's put me and who he's put me to. Last night, as we were out there, I went out there to support my brother as he was doing the fireworks show. And he, I know Brother John has a passion for that. I know Brother John puts a lot of time into that. It means a lot to him. And he told me the other day, he said, Preacher, he said, I'm about ready to be done with that. He said, then I'll be back up on your doorstep and uh, you and I get back to doing the business of what you and I need to be doing. Amen. I look forward to that happening, Brother John. Amen. But I know how much it means to my brother. And because of that, Miss Renee, I try to support him the best I can. Amen. And so in that, I want my brother to be successful. I want my brother to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, go through things and experience things in the right way. And so soon because of that, I'm going to do everything I can to help my brother out any which way I can. Matter of fact, last year, I remember his uh, Cody, uh, uh, Cody, Kirby, God help me. <laughs> Does it get worse, Brother Alex? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the club. God help me. God help me. Thank you, Brother. See, you're learning. Y'all catch that? He's learning. Last year when we went and watched Kirby play football, well, anyway, we, we went and seen him. Anyways, he was out there. And uh, as we were supporting him and cheering in the stands and everything, you know, we did it because we love our brother. Amen. We do it because we love the people of our church. We want to help them out any which way we can. You know what? I don't want anybody in here to be hurt. I don't want anybody in here to do without. I don't want anybody in here to be lacking in their lives. Matter of fact, Brother Whitman, I want you to be blessed beyond measure. I really do. So I ask God for that. I ask God to touch you and to heal you and to help you. Any of you that are sick, I don't want you sick. I don't want you in the hospital. I want you well. And so I care for you and I lift you up in my prayers. Why? Because we are family. You see the great buddy system that God has right here. Go back with me to verse number one. Look what he says. Brethren, that's us. If a man be overtaken in a fault, that can happen. Amen. You know, a lot of times we're too quick to point out the flaws in others around us. The fact of the matter is we're all subject to it. Oh, did you hear what so-and-so did? Oh, you can't, you can't. I almost went off stage, Brother John. We've got to get that camera. We've got to tell them people, they need to hurry up and get that camera here. Amen. Man, this girl, I, just, I got along. <laughs> we're so quick to point out people's flaws. We forget that's not why we're here. 
Do you understand and realize that we're all subject to the same things? Amen. The Bible says, let him that think if he stand and take heed, lest he fall. When you think you've got a handle on this thing, when you think you're good and solid, you're about ready to trip up and fall. Amen? Y'all remember the two that went into the house to pray? There was the Pharisee and the publican. Y'all remember that? And the publican standing uh, afar off. I didn't say republic, I said publican. The publican standing afar he, he, he said, you know, God have mercy on me, a sinner, you know. But that Pharisee said, who stepped up real big and bad, and he said, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. I fast twice in a week. I get tithes of all I possess. Yada, yada, yada. He goes on about all his stuff about how good and how perfect he is. And I'm not like this publican over here. And God said, the one that went down to his house justified was the publican. Why? Because he had a humble heart. Amen. When we see people that like to exalt themselves, like to puff themselves up, I got news for you. When you think you stand, take heed, lest you fall. We're all subject to it. I remind people all the time that I'm one sinner showing another sinner where to get the grace of God. Let me say it like this. I'm one beggar showing another beggar where to get the bread. Amen. Without that, there's no hope for you. There's no hope for me. But because God offers grace, I thank God for that. And we need to remember that. So here we are, brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. That's the way we behave. That's the way that we act. Go with me to James in chapter number 5 this morning. James chapter number 5. We're here to help one another. We're here to uplift one another. We're here to do right by one another. He says in verse number 14 of James chapter 5, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he, uh, if he have committed sins, then he shall be forgiven. We're not here to put down. We're here to restore. And he said, pray over them. Call for the elders of the church. Let's talk about me and the brethren. As we go there and we start praying over you, we're asking God to heal you and everything. We're not there to condemn you. We're there to restore you, to help you. Amen. And that's what we're here to do. We're not here to tear one another apart. This ought to be the one place where you can find comfort and joy. This ought to be the one place where you can find peace. Not ridicule. Read on. He says, Come and fetch your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, with that in mind, go back with me to the text. Look what he says. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, concern thyself, lest thou also be tempted. God's looking for people to do right and be right. He's looking for people to do right and be right. Righteousness. Doing it the right way. You know, look, Danny, I'm not here to put you down, brother. I'm here to pick you up. Amen. Edification is what the Bible talks about. Picking people up, not putting them down. You see, that's the best buddy system in the world. We look and see all the flaws and all the, all, all the problems out there, and we keep focusing on that. We keep dwelling on that. I'm here to tell you it brings everybody down. It brings everybody down. I'm not here looking at all the flaws. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all deserve hell. But thank God, I've got grace. And if you're saved today, you do too. Amen. Amen. If you're listening at home, I want you to understand this. Thank God for His grace because God's grace can take a sinner that should go to hell and take him so much further than that and take him into heaven. Amen. We're sinned abound. Grace didn't much more abound. Aren't you glad that God offers his grace? And by the way, God's grace is sufficient. Over and over and over we see this. He gives an example. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Elias, y'all remember? He was like you and I. But he did great things. You know why? Because he looked to God. Read on. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. We're talking about Elijah here. Y'all remember what Elijah did? That great opportunity that Elijah did and everything? Hey, he's just like you and I. Matter of fact, a lot of people like to talk about the part where he got out there in the cave and he started belly aching. and he said, God, I'm the only one. God, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. I, I, all these others, they failed you. They laid down on you. God, I'm the only one. You know, God doesn't dwell with that. God doesn't deal with that. 
Matter of fact, God glosses us right over that and says, hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, I've been zealous for you, God, but they, they let down on you. What are you doing here, Lodge? This ain't where I called you. This ain't where I put you. Why don't you get back to it? I think about old Peter. You know, Peter could really step in it, couldn't he? Amen? Peter could really step in it. Y'all remember when Peter denied the Lord three times? Well, we talk about that. Y'all remember when Peter sank after in the sea? Y'all remember that one? We talk about that one. You know what we don't talk about as much as we probably ought to? Peter's the only one who got out of the boat. He did walk on the sea for a while. But when he took his eyes off the Lord, he began to sink. But he did walk on water. There's only two people I know of in the Word of God that, that was able to do things like, you know what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Amen. He also came back and delivered one of the greatest messages that we know of outside of what God did. Hey, there at Pentecost, did he not? Amen. In Acts chapter number 2. So God doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. He learns how to restore or he Shows us how to restore man. Amen. You see, Peter bounced back. How about old David over there? We all like to talk about the sin of Bathsheba. But God says, there's not a, you know, this, this guy after my own heart. And he allowed David to do what? To set all things in order for the building of the, of the temple of God. Y'all with me this morning? You see, God's about restoration is what he's about. He's not about putting down and destruction and destroying things. That's that other guy. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. She said, I'm coming that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. See, God's about restoration, not about destruction. And what God wants to do for us here today, you think in the times in which we're living in, he's not here about destruction. Matter of fact, it's breaking his heart how man is going contrary to the things of God. So what does the world mean? It doesn't, want, it doesn't need a judge. It needs a brother to show them the way. It needs a brother. It needs a buddy that reaches out and gives them the truth because the truth will make us free. <coughs> you see, in the process of this thing, God didn't condemn these people. No, he restored these people and they did greater things on the other side because of what God did with them and through them and in them. Remember Elijah? Yeah, he was, in the, he was in the cave here for a while, but he came out of that cave and he did great things for the Lord before he left this earth. Thank God for that. Listen to me very carefully this morning. God's about restoration. Read on. He prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. And brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. God's more about you being a brother or a sister to those that are lost so that you can be a light unto them. When I start looking and seeing why God's got me here, I thank God for the opportunity. Now go with me to Hebrews in chapter number 12. Hebrews in chapter number 12. In Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 12, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be, let, but let it, let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Though what God says, look, those hands that hang down, pick them up. Pick them up. You know, those feeble knees, those that quaking and shaking, don't put a hey, encourage them. Inspire them, uplift them. Think about that. Think about that. You know, Jesus could have taken a different approach there at the tombs that day when he was dealing with the maniac of Gadara. That guy could have died a maniac. Amen. Possessed with devils. Oh, who would want to deal with him? He'd been cutting on himself. Matter of fact, I imagine he was probably all tattooed up the way we would look at it today. He had cuts all over him. And I imagine as the Lord looked at him and said, boy, he's too far gone. Ain't nothing for me to do with him. And walked on and left him alone. I would imagine, Brother Alex, if you read the story right there, the community right there would probably have been all right with that. Amen? 
Because they didn't like it when he got changed. They didn't like it when they came and found him clothed and in his right mind. They didn't like it like that. Matter of fact, it scared them to the point where they begged Jesus to leave their coast. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And so in the process of this deal, they really, you know, would have been all right if he'd stayed in that sinful condition, in that sinful state. But God knew that he needed a change in his life. That God knew that he needed Christ to come in and save his soul. And because of that, he sent Jesus there to do what Jesus does. And when he did what he did, wow, what an impact. Now Jesus says, I, I, I got something for you, buddy. Now because you've got it, and I know they don't want me here. But what I need you to do, I need you to go back to your people and tell them what the Lord's done for you. Amen. Read the story. He wanted to get on that boat and go away with Jesus. You said, no, mm -mm. I want you to stay here and I want you to go back and tell them. Go show them. Now why? Because he knew the impact that he could have upon his people. The Bible says that the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. You know what that means? It means the same thing when he said he died for the sins of the whole world. Y'all with me this morning? Amen. The fact that he died for the sins of the whole world means that he wants everybody to be saved. Even though, Brother Tom, we know not everybody's going to be saved. Amen. They don't change his heart. They don't change the thought process that Jesus has. He wants all men to come to repentance. But unfortunately... They willingly go a different direction. They'd rather, like with the man you could they'd rather him stay in the sinful state. But when Jesus came along, he changed him, he saved him, and it made all the difference in the world. You know what Jesus told him after that? Like I said, that you go back and you affect those others. That's how it works. What God's done for you, that you go and you help somebody else the way that he's helped you. That's God's buddy system. You see, I'm one sinner showing another sinner where to get the grace. Or should I say, I'm one beggar showing another beggar where to get the bread. Amen. Amen. I'm not here to put down, I'm here to pick up. I'm not your judge. I mentioned a week ago how I walked through the front door and I heard people go out the back door as I came into the house. I'm not your judge. I'm not here to judge you, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to enlighten you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to pick you up. That's what I'm here for. You remember the woman that was taken in adultery? Remember how they were so much wanting Jesus to have her stoned? Do y'all remember that? I always wondered about that story about uh, she's there, but where's the dude at? Where's the guy that she was in bed with? Oh, maybe he's their buddy. And they don't want their buddy to get in trouble. She's expendable. We'll just throw her to Jesus. We'll make her on the point. Hey, she dies. That's all right. It's no big deal. It is to the Lord. Amen. It is to the Lord. They began to talk to Jesus. Jesus knelt down, the Bible says, and began to write on the ground. And people always want to debate and argue what he's writing on the ground. I'll tell you what he's writing on the ground. It's called the Word of God. Amen. He's writing the Word of God on the, word, or on the ground. Now, I don't know what passage of Scripture he's using. I don't know what words he's using right there. I know it's the Word of God, though. Because whatever came out of Jesus is the Word of God. So as he's writing the Word of God there on the ground, I've heard people say, well, maybe he's uh, calling out names and everything. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that because uh, in order to call out names, he has to know their names, and he don't, he don't keep up with the wicked's names. Amen. That's right. Come on now. Amen. He only remembers the names when they're saved. Remember the rich man died and went to hell? And then Lazarus? Now, why does he call out Lazarus? Because Lazarus was a believer. The rich man, he's just a rich man. Amen. He's just any other guy out there, if you will, that doesn't know the Lord. So as he begins to write the word of God right there, and he begins to convict their heart, and all of a sudden he turns around and he says, uh, Woman, where are thine accusers? Oh, I, I, 
I don't have none, boy. And then Jesus said, neither do I accuse thee. Go and sin no more. It's not about keeping you in your sinful state. It's about changing your condition and your circumstance. He's about saving your soul. And by the way, he does tell you to go and sin no more. But in the process of this thing, he's not there to condemn you and put you down. He's there to pick you up. Amen. He's there to pick you up. So why do we think it's all right for us to jump on one another? Why do we think it's all right for those of us to start pointing out people's errors? The fact of the matter is, we all need the Lord. We all need help. I've been saved over 36 years, and I'm here to tell you, second generation preacher, and I didn't become a preacher because my dad was. I became a preacher because God called me to it. I actually ran from my calling for three years. I didn't want no part of this. I didn't want any part of being a preacher. I wanted to be rich. And in my mind, preachers ain't rich. Amen. So I didn't want me no, none of this. I didn't want none of this. Then God got a hold of my heart and revealed to me what he wanted for me. Once I surrendered to that, he gave me a love for it. And the more I look at it, the more I examine it, Miss Carol, I come to understand I'm one beggar short enough to beggar worthy to bread. I don't deserve it. I deserve hell. But I'm not here to put down. I'm here to pick up. And when I look into the scriptures and I see where we're at today, look, it's ugly outside. We'd all say amen to that. There's a lot of things. There's fear out there. People are hearing all sorts of different stories. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Do this. Do that. Right? right? We're all hearing all sorts of different stories. And what it's doing is it's creating such a division amongst us that when we're focusing on those things, we're losing sight of where our real purpose and our real reason for being here is. You see... God knew we would need each other. So we're not here to tear one another down. We're here to pick one another up. That's what we need. Let him without sin cast the first stone. See, I'm not here to condemn somebody that, let's say, maybe smokes a cigarette. I hate to acknowledge it, but before me and my wife got together, I used to smoke cigarettes. I did. I don't know more. Don't condone it. I'm not praising it. I'm just saying I've been down some of them roads myself. Amen. God had mercy on me. God gave me grace. And because of that, I thank God for that. Look, the truth of the matter is, I'm one sinner showing another sinner. That's what we're here for. God knew, if you go back to the garden, when he put Adam in the garden, he looked at Adam and he said, Adam's going to need somebody called a help me. And in the process of that, he gave him Eve. And you said, well, Eve took him astray. You know what God never did? He never busted them up. He never busted them up. He never said, hey, Eve is a bad uh, deal for you, Adam. Hey, uh, you separate from her and I'll give you another. No, 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 no. He taught them how to work it out. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you of another story. Job. Y'all remember Job? Job lost everything. One day, he lost it all. Man, every time somebody come and told him, I guarantee you, Job had to see anybody come up that highway. Amen. Every time they come up that road, he, oh, mercy, here's some more bad news. Oh, mercy, here's some more bad news. Go read it. Chapter number one, book of Job. You know what happened? Got down to the point where he's there in that sackcloth and ashes, man. He's mourning. He didn't shave himself. Boy, he's, he's, he's a pitiful sight. And that one woman, his wife, comes to him and says, why don't you just curse God and die? You know what God doesn't do? At the end of the story of the book of Job, Job gets all replenished. He's got more kids. He's got another fortune. Amen. Hey, God replenishes him. 
Read the last of it, chapter 42. God blesses him tremendously. Guess who else gets blessed in that process? He doesn't give him a new wife. They both get. You see, sometimes we, even at our weakest point, can do bad things. Amen. God understands the breaking of the heart. God understands the circumstance. Look, if your children would have been wiped out on you, if everything you would have known would have got wiped out of you. Hey, in that day that Job suffered what he did, his wife did too. God didn't hold that note over her head. He blessed her at the end of it. And the more we start seeing these things throughout the scriptures, the more we get to understand who and what God truly is. I think a lot of people have the wrong concept and the wrong mindset of who God is. They're thinking of some God where he's ready to shove a lightning bolt down your throat. That's not God. That's that Greek mythology dude called Zeus. <laughs> he's not real. <coughs> My God, who is real, Amen. is standing there with open arms saying, whosoever will may come. You say, how do you know that? Romans 10, verse 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Right there, he's got his arms outstretched to a disobedient and gainsaying people. Amen. Saying, come. Come. Read the last chapter of the book of the, uh, the Word of God, and you'll see and the bride say, come. Whosoever will may come. Come. That's the invitation. Come. Come. Now why? In 2 Peter chapter 3, you'll get your answer. Verse number 9 says, he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. There's a time frame, brothers and sisters, we have a small window of opportunity. There's a time frame. That's why I tell you and I warn you that in the times in which we're living in, we don't have much more time. So if we're going to win our loved ones, if we're going to win those lost people, if we're going to see people get saved, right now is the day, right now is the time. Because time's running out. The one thing I don't want to see, Brother Darrell, I don't want to look across that great gulf one day and see my loved ones in hell. You know what? We talked about the rich man in hell. You know what he didn't want to see? He didn't want to see his brothers coming there. Y'all with me this morning? Here's a lost man in hell. Sad truth is he became a believer too late. He began to believe when he was in hell. He said, Lord, hmm? it was too late. Because he's already in hell. But he didn't want his family there. And brothers and sisters, I don't want my family there neither. So as I have the opportunity, I'm not here to condemn and to put down. I'm here to pick up. Go back with me to the text. Look what he says. Brethren, that's us believers. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself that's the awesome be tempted. The way that you do it makes all the difference in the world. The way that you do it, the spirit of meekness. I've had people come to me. I had a fellow one time. I'm not going to give you his name because maybe somebody's tuning in that knows him. After the service one day, he came up to me and he says, Hey, preacher, uh, you know, me and so-so, me and you know, we're living together. I said, Yeah, I know. He said, you didn't say anything. I said, you're right. I said, what would happen if I would have said something? He said, I left. I said, exactly. I said, plus, you're not a member of the church. You're just coming. Why should I expect him to be where I'm at? I don't know where his heart's at. I don't know if he knows the Lord. Come on now, amen. He said, well, you... I said, yeah. I said, if I would have said something other... You would have left, exactly. Then I couldn't have preached to you. And if I can't preach to you, you'll never change. You'll never get right. I said, you already know what's right and wrong on this because that's why you're bringing it up to me. 
So I don't have to convince you of that. You already know. My job isn't to put you down. My job is to pick you up. Amen. Amen. So I'll take a lot that comes through my door. We're not talking about people that are serving the Lord. We're talking about people that are just coming and listening. If you're tuning in at home, I hope you get this. I hope that you understand. I'll take a lot. I'll put up with a lot. Because I don't expect a sinner to do anything other than what they do. They sin. That's what I did. Before I accepted the Lord, I, I sinned. Je Jeff, that's what, that's what we did, brother. Amen. But when I met the Lord, he changed me. Does that mean I don't sin anymore? No, I sin, but I sin with a conscience now. Amen? Things I do, I don't want to do it. What I want to do, I don't do it. Romans 7, if you want to know. Romans 7, write that down. And what Paul comes to the conclusion is that in my flesh was no good thing. So who's going to separate me from this body of death? And the conclusion is God. Only God can. So I'm not here to try to put anybody down. I'm here to pick everybody up. Because that's what grace is. Unmerited favor. With every head bowed here, right close to me looking around this morning. I mean, be honest with me today and say, Preacher, I know for a fact heaven's my destination. Can you say that this morning? And that good enough. Amen. Amen. I mean, you're sitting here today and say, Preacher, I don't know where I'm going. I believe I'm going to hell. Please pray for me. If I have anybody like that this morning, amen. Amen. Let me invite you to step out this morning. Won't you come? Why don't you come? How many believers would be honest with me today and say, Preacher, you're right. I've got loved ones I need to get more concerned about. I have loved ones that are on their way to hell. Pray for me. Pray for my loved ones. Amen. Amen. There's an altar for you this morning. Why don't you come? Lost people, why don't you come? Christians, why don't you come? There's an opportunity this morning. Why don't we use it? Let's pray. I pray, Lord, you speak to the hearts here this morning. Be with us. Lead God direct in all we do and say. We praise your name in Christ's name. Amen. All stand with page, Brother John. Page 281. 281. If God's going to heart, you come. Some have started to, others need to. Come on right now. Come on right now. Lost people, won't you come? Come grab me by the hands. Come on, right now. All it takes is taking that first step. God will do everything else from there. Why don't you come? Whatever the need is, come on right now. Come on right now. Don't put it off. Don't hesitate. Come on, amen. Come on. Whatever the need is, come on right now. If you're not sure, come on. Whatever it is. You got a loved one?
so good. God's good to us, amen. Bless us, amen, all the time. Amen. Bless us with so much. You know, like I said, we need each other. We do we need each other. Y'all come back tonight, six o'clock, bring somebody with you. Five o'clock for this day, or for uh, choir practice. For choir practice. Yeah. choir practice. But anyways, y'all be back tonight. See what else God has for us out of Galatians over here. Amen. But I'm glad that God, he's not that one to shut light in bolts and do all this work done now. He's there with open arms. Yeah. And what a loving God he is. And I thank God for that. It is good. It's God's amazing grace as we sang earlier. Oh, it's so wonderful. Be back tonight. Bring somebody with you. Tune in tonight. If you're able, we thank God for every opportunity. Amen. I do appreciate you being here. Appreciate all that you do. You know, God gives us so much, so much to thank Him for. Now, Brother Jeff, if you will, brother, dismiss us in prayer this morning. Yeah,